The whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. Altinamel is a national nature park occupying a vast territory of more than half a million hectares, one of the largest in Kazakhstan. Spreading out on the right bank of the Idli River, including several mountain ranges and vast steppe territories, it is like a small country, amazing in its unusual and diverse landscapes. But the unique natural beauty is not the only thing that astonishes people. The territory of the park is located on the land of ancient Jatissou, on the very border of the Republic of Kazakhstan and China, on the way of ancient caravan and nomadic routes. Altin Emel keeps its secrets to this day, which give rise to numerous myths and legends. And we will try to reveal some of them today. Natural wonders or man-made riddles of the national park. And it looks like the version that these boulders were brought with water or something else and placed vertically, well, it doesn't seem to be truth. They stand too straight. What links Altinamel with Chinggis Khan? They were investigated that this tree is more than 700 years old. Mysteries of unique necropolis. Bez Chartier, it concentrates some kind of sacred powers. I'm not afraid of this word, necrotic energy. Watch in today's episode, Myths and Legends of Nature and People Origin, The Secrets of Ancient Burials and the Great Conqueror. Altinamel National Park is a huge layer of cultural heritage associated with historical, legendary personalities. Thanks to one of them, as the legend says, it even got its name. Hello, it is the Time Puzzle and me, Sergei Alexianak. An ancient legend says that almost seven centuries ago, a huge army passed through this pass. Its leader, seeing the mountain peaks illuminated by the setting sun, exclaimed, al -Tinemel. In his language, this meant a golden saddle. He was a great Mongol emperor. Chinggis Khan the founder and the first great Khan of the Mongolian Empire, a huge state that included the territories of Central Asia, Southern Siberia, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, China and Tibet. Formed in 1206, which survived many changes and divisions, the empire of Chinggis Khan officially ceased to exist in 1368. Almost 650 years passed since that moment, but the history of this phenomenal state continues to keep its secrets, stirring the minds of scientists and researchers. No fewer puzzles are connected with the personality of Chinggis Khan himself, a man who managed to unite disparate tribes on a vast territory, from the Pacific Ocean to Eastern Europe. But the main intrigue for centuries, perhaps, is the burial place of the great emperor. Archaeologists, historians and legend hunters are trying unsuccessfully to find the grave of Chinggis Khan and, of course, this gives rise to many hypotheses and myths. One of the legends claims that the great commander was buried in the territory of the Altinamel National Park. The place of his burial, according to this version, is the famous Singing Barkhan and the terrible sounds that it makes sometimes are the groans of the soul of Chinggis Khan, who repents of his sins. This is the grave of Chinggis Khan, and it is one of the quite common plots associated with Chinggis Khan. It is natural that folk folklore, some traditions, always connect certain places with the names of great people. As explained by the interlocutor of the Time Puzzle, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor Anwar Galiev, the lack of information about the place of burial of Chinggis Khan may be due to several factors. Perhaps all who participated in the burial were killed. 
The Mongols wanted to keep the place of rest of their leader in secret in order to protect him from looting or desecration. After all, those who could not resist Genghis Khan during his life could try to take revenge on his ashes after his death. And the wealth that was buried in those days, together with the great rulers, always represented a great interest for the robbers. But historians have a very clear opinion regarding the finding of the grave of the stunner of the world in Altin Emel. The nomads, unlike the sedentary societies, do not have a binding to any particular territory. But there is, this territory it is marked with ancestral cemeteries. And it is therefore obvious that Chengiz Khan could not be buried neither here, in the Almaty region, nor in the South Kazakhstan region or elsewhere. And most likely he was buried in his ancestral cemetery on the Burkhan Kaldun hill. In the Altinemel National Park, there are places that are directly connected not only with the final resting place of the conqueror. There are such long livers that it is quite possible met with the army of the Mongolian commander during his lifetime. Now we're going through the steppe and we are heading for one more unique object of the National Park Altinemel. This park exists since 1996, and since then tourists are already starting to come here to see the size, this tree. A lot of tourists come here. In the summer there is an oasis here. It is hard to believe, but this giant-sized tree is willow. Scientists have proven that its age is more than seven centuries. And there is one more legend connected with Chengiz Khan. According to the legend, in the shadows of this tree, the great conqueror stopped with his numerous army. And from that spring they watered their horses. The army of Chengiz Khan, first of all, it was notable for its mobility and ability to cover huge distances in a short time. And this quality, in many respects, provided victory of the great commander. After all, the ability to appear where you are not expected is the key to success. And the secret of his mobility was pretty simple. As known, the soldiers of Chengiz Khan always had another reserve horse. That is, if it is 500 people, and we must add to this another thousand horses. And this spring, absolutely not enough for this army, even for that small one. I do not know what about the army of Chengiz Khan and whether such a small spring can quench the thirst of several thousand people, but the water here is really tasty. It is difficult to prove whether there was the encampment of the army of Chengiz Khan or not near these willows, but the ancient age of these mighty trees is confirmed by scientists. Janat Nesibai, who has been working in the national park for 13 years and knows a lot about these places and their inhabitants, told us about this. The research was conducted. Two branches of the tree were cut off, of course with the permission. They were investigated and scientists proved that this tree is more than 700 years old. Upon closer look, it means that this tree saw Chengiz Khan. The appearance of these wood giants inspires an almost mystical awe, involuntarily making people think of their impressive age. For hundreds of years, the lower branches have grown so much and heavy that it threatens their existence. The branches cannot withstand their weight, and they are breaking down because of their weight. We deliberately set up the support so that they don't break. Perhaps Chengiz Khan himself did not stop at these places, but it is likely that small cohorts of Mongolian intelligence agents watered their war horses here. By the way, not far from this spring is another one, but one shouldn't water his horses from that one. And the name of the spring is associated with a very different historical personality.
Literally a kilometer from the singing Bakan, there is a spring, the water of which is considered curative. It is recommended to wash in this spring, but people shouldn't drink the water because it is very salty. By the way, this spring is named after Chokan Valikanov. Chokan Valikanov is a well-known Kazakh scientist, historian, geographer and ethnographer. He was born in November 1835 in the tract Kushmaroon, now North Kazakhstan region. At birth he was named as Muhammad Hanafiya, and Chokan is the affectionate nickname given to him by his mother, which later became his name. The young man received a brilliant education. At the age of 12, he enrolled the Omsk Cadet Corps, which he graduated on the 8th of November 1853 at the age of 17 years. After graduation, Valikanov becomes an adjutant to Gustav Gosward, the Governor General of Western Siberia, and thanks to him in 1855, he made his first trips to Jetisu and Korkant Khanates. And already in 1858-59, he went to Kashgaria. Kashgar was then a closed territory and, for example, it was extremely difficult for Europeans to get there. One of those who got there before the Valikanov was a German researcher Adolf Schlagenweit. But he naturally was singled out and he was executed and his head was shown for a long time in the cities of Kashgar. Adolf Schlagenweit is a German scientist and researcher. In 1854, he, with the money of the British East India Company, investigated the territories of the Himalayas, Karakorum and Kunlun. In 1857, he went on a solitary journey to Kashgaria, which was then an extremely closed region. The Chinese authorities were very suspicious of the Europeans who arrived to this region, considering them as spies. Adolf was captured and executed by Vali Khan, the Emir of Kashgar. His head was chopped off near the city wall. The fact and details of his death were established by Chokan Valikanov a year later, in 1858, when he himself went on this dangerous journey. It was this trip that brought the real glory of the researcher and scientist to Valikanov. He looked like all representatives of local peoples. Of course, he knew language, he knew religion. And under the guise of a Muslim merchant, he just got there. For this risky trip, a special caravan of Semipalatinsk merchant Burash Alpayev was prepared, and Chokan Valikanov joined it on the territory of Semirechia. Shaving his head in advance, he put on national clothes and introduced himself to all of them as Alim Bai, a relative of the caravan Bashi. That's how Valikanov could get to the territory of Kashgaria. This is what the researcher wrote in his paper Essays of Jungaria. On May 29th, the caravan started its movement. The fine weather favored our journey. We first went by picket to the Altinemel picket, along the beautiful valleys of the Alatai foothills. The scientific works of Chokan Valikanov, which resulted from the trip, were devoted to the history, geography and social structure of the peoples of East Turkestan, which Kashgaria was a part of. Later they were published in Russian, German, English and French. One of the scientific feats of Chokan Valikanov is his penetration into Kashgar and the fact that he acquainted the scientific world of Europe with a situation that exists in this distant Chinese province. Unfortunately, the life of the scientist was brief. He left this world at the age of 30 in 1865. As fate has willed, an outstanding scientist is buried near the Altinemel National Park in the village of Shanghanai, which also bears an unofficial name Shokan. Here is located the largest museum of the scientist. A spring is still flowing on the territory of the Altinemel National Park, reminding us of the great son of the Kazakh nation.
I think that we have a lot of tourists who are interested in the footsteps of the Chokan Valikanov. Where is a spring of Chokan Valikanov? All the tourists try to stop at this place, pay tribute to the memory of our great ethnographer, drink water from that spring. Well, you know, and we are such a superstitious people, we want to be like Chokan Valikanov, or at least our children to become such great scientists as Chokan Valikanov. And now, let's go back to the personality of a man who managed to conquer half the world almost 700 years ago, and we will continue to explore the secrets of Altin Emel. One of them is the stone stele of Oshak Tas, located on the plain near the mountains of Kalkani. Another one, name of a traveler action of the national park is connected with the name of Chengiz Khan, the stone stellars, or Shaktas. One legend claims that the warriors of the Khan put on them a huge, special cauldron to cook food for the whole army. The second myth says that it is a single tower on top of which a fire was made to warn about the appearance of the enemy. Which version is the most believable? Let's try to understand. Oshak Tas in Kazakh means hearth of stones or stove. It would seem that the meaning and purpose of this monument is hidden in its name. But if you carefully look at the location of the stones, you understand it is almost impossible to set the cauldron on fire there. There are not enough points of support for this purpose. Maybe the missing stones simply fell down and now lie nearby. A well-known Kazakhstani traveler, Alexander Petrov, studied this issue. How can the cauldron be placed on these stones? Well, let's put the cauldron, but it will be very unstable there. And then, where to get water for cooking? Well, there are two springs. One springs where Shokan Balikanov stopped. But the debit of this spring is very small, even for a small army, even for 500 people. Indeed, even if this area is rich with fur and feather, but there is not a single source of water nearby. And of course, the main argument, which refutes the idea of using Oshakta's cell as a kind of hot plate, is the way of life of the army of Chengiz Khan. Well, if we take one Timon, which consisted of 10,000 people, and this 10,000 people, they divided, well, according to the current military hierarchy of the troops, the branch consisted of 10 people, and these 10 people in this large army, they were autonomous. That is, the whole army consisted of these branches. This department was autonomous. It fed independently. They had their own food for these 10 people. It turns out that Oshak Tas as an ancient hearth of the Mongolian army is just a beautiful myth. Another legend about a signal tower also raises doubts. The height of Stella is about two meters and it is necessary to kindle in some mysterious way a large fire that will be visible from afar. It is clear that all this is difficult and inconvenient. The soldiers of Chengiz Khan would not waste energy and time on useless work. It is much more logical to use the nearby slopes of the Kalkan Mountains for this purpose. 
Then there is a fair question. Can this bizarre pile of stones have a natural origin and indicates some ancient cataclysm that occurred in this terrain? And it looks like the version that these boulders were brought with water or something else and placed vertically. While it doesn't seem to be truth, they stand too straight. The Kromlek or Shaktas, which consists of such three large stone slabs, and they are also large in size, and they are also very well polished. And this is also not accidental, at least the analogy arises immediately with the Kromlek of Stonehenge, because they look the same when they resemble figures, human figures, three wise men for example, or some three figures that are standing. It seems to us today that in the middle of the step, but in fact, I think that they were such a sign perhaps indicating the way. And of course, these are all not accidental forms, not random sizes, not a random place. On closer inspection, you can see that tourists are putting coins in numerous cracks, covering huge stone blocks. It is an old custom to make a kind of sacrifice in sacred places. The connection of the tourist facilities of the Altinimel Park with the name of the great Mongolian conqueror collapsed so easily, providing to be only elements of folklore that we could not help thinking, did Chengiz Khan really go there? Or is this just another myth surrounding this mysterious person? Jungar Ralatau is a mountain chain that divides the territories of modern Kazakhstan and China. There are the famous Jungar Gates, a mountain pass from time immemorial used by the people living here for trade and movement. There was a section of the Great Silk Road. But those roads that are convenient for peace will be convenient for war also. It really is one of the most probable routes, the Jungarian Gate. And pursuing the Naimans, they invaded the Jetisu area, and this is the territory of the Jetisu. Most likely, they went there. In 1219, the army of Chengiz Khan went on a campaign to conquer Central Asia. Passing Semirechia, the whole armada of the conqueror fell upon the flourishing cities of Otrar and Signak and this bloody campaign ended with the capture and devastation of Samarkand and Bukhara. Pursuing his own enemies, the Naimans, Chengiz Khan invaded the territory of the Seven Rivers in 1211, that is, 1219th year. I'm talking about the so-called Otra catastrophe, of which Marx also spoke, that palaces, libraries and everything literally goes to hell. This was the beginning of such a grandiose campaign, of course. The Altinamel National Park is now located on the territory which was known since ancient times as Jetisu Semirechia. It received its name by the number of major rivers – Or, Karatal, Bien, Aksu, Lepsi, Baskan and Sarkand. The region itself is located between the lakes of Balkash in the north, Sasikol and Alakol in the northeast, the Jungar Alatan range in the southeast and the ridges of the northern Tenshan in the south. The territory of the present Semirechia was part of the territory of the state of Mogulistan during the Middle Ages. And the very name of the state is Mogulistan. This is a somewhat distorted name for the ethnonym Mongols. We can fix certain temporary points of stay of Mongolian troops on the territory of Kazakhstan. This is 1211, 1216 and the Otra disaster itself. If the history of the passage of the troops of Chengiz Khan can justify the legends connecting the name of the commander with Altin Emel, then returning to the stele of Oshak Tas, we see a completely different picture. One of the versions of the origin takes us to a much older time, in the first millennium BC, when this place was inhabited by mysterious Saka tribes who built their mysterious city of the dead, Beth Shatir, on the shores of Ili. 
Bess Chateau is a unique complex of Saka burials located at the foot of Sherlock Mountains. It consists of more than 30 large, medium and small mounds, some of which are interconnected by underground passages, a real miracle preserved from ancient times to the present day. Bess Chateau received its name according to the number of five largest burial mounds the central one of which was called the Jeti Sub Pyramid, and it has truly impressive dimensions, 105 meters in diameter, and its height is 17 meters. The Director General of the Altinamel National Natural Park, Kalik Bayadilov, has been engaged for many years not only in protecting unique natural and historical riches, but also in their restoration. Uh, we have restored one of the Beshatir mounds, now there is an open-air museum. We still have to do the musification inside, and every respecting Saka descendant will be able to come, will be able to know how their ancestors used to live, what kind of culture they had. The whole complex of the necropolis consists of 31 mounds, which are located in a picturesque foothill valley, where a magnificent view of the Ili River opens from. This, perhaps, is one of the most famous soccer burial places, along with the famous necropolis of the East Sikh. A cemetery shrine, which is located on the territory of our park, is very unique indeed. It is a unique necropolis. Recently, in the last two or three years, such a very thorough restoration has been made. All the interior decoration was restored as it looked before. But then again, this is my opinion, I believe that Bez Chateau, it concentrates some kind of sacred powers. I'm not afraid of this word, necrotic energy, which perhaps carries some sort of protective function for the park. The first excavations of the Bechatir burial ground were held in 1957, later for two years, from 1959 to 1961. These unique monuments of ancient culture were studied by the Jatisu and Ili archaeological expeditions under the leadership of the famous Kazakh scientist Kemal Akishev. The most complete survey was received, the so-called first Bechatir burial mound. Its diameter is 52 meters, height is more than 7 meters, and the location to the main group is more northern. Its similarity with a large Bechatir mound is a flat top. The burial mound consisted of three layers. The first, a stone covering with thickness from 1 to 3 meters. The second layer, composed of ground and rubble, reached from 13 to 3 and a half meters. The lower layer, formed from a large broken stone, concealed a burial chamber built of logs of tin-shined fir. Reed mats were put on top of the logs and they were tied with ropes. Considering that the nearest places of growth of the tin-shined fir are more than a hundred kilometers away, one can imagine the difficulties encountered in the delivery of wood. Now this mound is completely reconstructed and is open for visiting. This is the entrance to the burial place. And here is a labyrinth. That is the passage to the tomb. See here? Two, three? But the tomb itself, where was it? Or is it for several people? There was one tomb. That is, these tombs were connected with each other. What could have caused the creators of this complex to connect the Kurgans with each other by a system of underground tunnels remains a mystery. But there is one version that these labyrinths could be used for various ceremonial rites that took place in this sacred place. Of course, what we see now is just a reconstruction of those funeral cells that guarded the peace of the Saka kings. But what really amazes me, this is this miraculously preserved piece of wood of the same real burial chamber. This is the famous Chenchine spruce. And just imagine, this tree is more than 2,000 years old. There are unusual features of Bechatir, which suggests it is not just a burial place. 
Amazing stone fences and freestanding buildings from megaliths distinguish this necropolis from the rest. What is the deep symbolism of this stone forest? A well-known Kazakh art critic, Olga Baturina, a professor at the Kazakh National Academy of Arts, named after Zhuganov, devoted a year to studying megalithic buildings in different countries. Of course, we cannot help but notice the similarities of all the megaliths of the ancient world, the ancient art, no matter where they are located. In this sense, if the Stonehenge is the most beautifully preserved, but in fact there are such cromlechs in different places. And our cromlech is Beshatir, of course. And many as that are around him, forming alley to their people. They are also prototypes of human figures. And this is also a procession to the sacred place. The name of the megalith arose as a result of the fusion of two Greek words, mega, large, and lithos, stone. The term was first proposed in 1849 by the English explorer Algernon Herbert in his work Cyclops Christianus, and was formally adopted at the Congress in Paris to designate the ancient architectural structures of stone. The term is rather vague and conditionally divided further into types. Many as constructions from a single stone, cromlechs when there are several stones, and the dolmen, a large stone slab raised on the supports, reminiscent of a table. The most famous megalith in history, it is certainly a megalith cromlech of Stonehenge, and it's interesting that it was built much later than all the other megaliths, because it's about the 17th century BC. For example, at this time in Egypt, pyramids were already built. Stonehenge is located in the English county of Wiltshire, about 130 kilometers from the capital of Great Britain, London. Legends connect the construction of Stonehenge with the name of the ancient magician Merlin. Someone considers them a legacy of ancient Romans or Druids. The most popular versions, now in existence, consider this huge stone structure by an ancient observatory and others a place for ritual burial of the dead. Burial mounds are tombs, of course. Therefore, the tombs weren't made for any person but to the head of the family, because genus was a very important concept. Men could not survive alone. Therefore, the head of the clan never left with death, did not disappear. On the contrary, he remained the patron of the family. Therefore, it was so important to build a burial place for him to organize it as a sacred place. Look at how much Beshatir's cromlechs are like the stone stellars of Oshaktas. It is possible that they performed the same function. Stone stele of Oshaktas, it is possible that this is some kind of branch of the Beshatir necropolis. It looks like truth. It is possible that this is some small ritual sacral place where sacrifices were made. For example, burying in Beshatir. Necropolis Beshatir surprisingly organically fits into the surrounding landscape. And this is not accidental. According to the beliefs of the ancient Saka, universe consisted of three worlds, the upper, middle and lower. And what surrounds a person in this area clearly shows this division and the integrity of all at the same time. The plain stretching between the mountains and the river is an average world inhabited by people. Mountain peaks are the abode of the gods, and the river that separates the world of the living from the world of the dead. It's amazing how subtly the ancient people felt their connection with nature and its forces. There is just this energy here, this concentration of what is brought to us in the park directly to the territory of our country. It is the energy of these ancient people, wild and original. In Alten Emel, the crew of the time puzzle was pursued relentlessly with a feeling of touching some great mystery of our ancestors, but which we managed to lose. 
This is an incredible and amazing connection of a subtle spiritual world with the harsh reality of an ancient person. It is a deep harmony with the elements that controlled the lives of people hundreds and thousands of years ago. The National Park allowed only to touch its riddles and made us feel like grains of sand in a huge universe. Altinamel, here the history of the ancient Saka is closely intertwined with the legends of the great conqueror Chengiz Khan and the outstanding scientist Chokhan Valikanov. We try to solve several secrets related to these names, but the final conclusion is yours. It was a time puzzle and me, Sergei Alexionik.